Hi there, and welcome to another episode of TPI Talks. For this edition, I managed to grab some time with Disguise's Peter Kirkup, the company's Global Technical and Solutions Manager, who, among many things, was talking about the company's latest workflow, XR, and what it can mean in our current situation where gigs are no longer happening in venues and more and more companies are turning to the world of stream content. If you wanted to delve a little bit deeper into this topic, you can find the full uncut interview via Spotify, all links on the TPI website. So without further ado, over to you, Peter. So I'm Peter Kirkup. I'm the Global Technical Solutions Manager at Disguise. So I look after a lot of the technical uh, requirements of our customers, understanding their projects. And how have you been finding this whole time in lockdown isolation? <laughs> it's, uh, it's a new world for us all, isn't it? So uh, I, I guess one aspect that I've really enjoyed, actually, is the fact that we're, we're getting more focused time with customers kind of face to face on video calls where previously you'd spend a lot of the time traveling around or setting up meetings. You know, now a meeting is just a click away. You know, for us, it's a, it's a time really to, uh, to educate. Um, so we've used this as a, as a great opportunity to set up a, a huge webinar campaign. I think we've already run 30 plus webinars oh, wow, since okay. the lockdown happened. One of the main reasons we wanted to kind of chat today was um, talking specifically about some of the streaming options that are now kind of like kind of coming to fruition. A lot of them are using Disguise XR software to kind of create these virtual stages. So before we get into some of that, I just kind of want to learn a little bit more about XR itself. Um, so what's the, <laughs> what's, the, what's the elevator pitch for XR? What is this software or this workflow that we've heard so much about in the last like month, a year or so? Yeah, so the Disguise XR workflow is uh, is a workflow that enables people to extend reality. So that's what the XR stands for. Right. And what we're doing is we're we're using technical production elements that Disguise has been connected to for a long, long time. So LED screens, camera systems, tracking data are all worlds that Disguise was very familiar with. And we've kind of brought all of those worlds together alongside real-time content engines, which of course have emerged over the last few years, uh, to create extended reality environments that where we can put a presenter or a performer into a LED screen configuration. It doesn't have to be a box. It could be any shape or size that makes sense for the, the setup and allow them to be immersed in a virtual environment. And that means that they can feel as if they're part of the, uh, the space. They can engage with the content that's around them. They can understand what programming is being created. And it also gives them naturalistic lighting and natural response to the space because the lighting is being cast by the LED screen rather than coming off of harsh studio lighting as you would do if you were doing a virtual studio in, in green screen, for example. So extended reality is, is really an amalgamation of lots of workflows within the disguise environment, some of which are new, some of which have existed for a long time. Within the XR workflow, the two main buzzwords were AR and MR. But it's, it's, it's these terms that are talked about so often, but I think it could probably do a bit of like demystifying what they actually mean in, in like real world terms. So if we start with AR, AR stands for augmented reality, and it's mm. definitely a buzzword. We're hearing that all over yeah. the place. Uh, Apple has an AR development kit for their phones, for example. Um, what AR is, is about bringing a virtual object in front of a camera so you can essentially paint a picture on top of a live camera. And that allows you to, uh, to create objects in the foreground. So for example, if I were to, to place an augmented reality object in front of me on the video, you would see it floating in front of me in, in the camera space. Mm -hmm. um, now augmented reality has been used to, to great effect on a lot of shows and we've got augmented reality workflows built into disguise. And um, the real trick of it is combining that with a real time content engine and a camera tracking system so that as the camera moves to a new location, you render the content from the correct perspective so that instead of it just being a flat piece of content painted onto the screen, it's rendered appropriately to wherever the camera is in the 3D space. Mixed reality is about mixing that with virtual environments on screens. So in our case, LED screens that we're uh, using behind the presenter 
and creating a seamless link between the two of them. Um, so augmented reality systems normally would stand alone. You would have a, an AR system that's just running your show. Um, and what Disguise has done really in this world is kind of created this mix where you can have a seamless world that sort of blends between what's behind you in the in the LED screen and what's in front of you in the in the augmented world. And we can even do tricks like have an augmented object that's in the AR space for the viewer, but is actually being projected onto the LED screen for the presenter. So the presenter knows where it is. So you don't sort of make that classic faux pas of walking through an object. Mm -hmm. uh, mixed reality and full XR that we're talking about um, is something that's still under development. But we're talking to a lot of customers, obviously, in the current climate about how important this is for, for their deliverables and getting out of the, the current situation. Mm. So we're encouraging people to get in touch and talk to us if they do have projects where they want to make use of these extended reality workflows. But were you ever thinking like you this whole kind of like streaming concerts that we're now seeing a few people working on was ever going to be a thing? We as a manufacturer, we don't ever really aim to write a feature specifically for one small subset of users. We're looking to, to broaden everyone's capabilities with the tool. So one of the key things uh, we do when we're designing these uh, workflows is to include as, as many different verticals in the capabilities as possible. Right. And what we've done is we've built workflows that can be applied in, in any space. So there's no reason you couldn't start applying these into a theatrical context or into a, um, an esports tournament. Uh, we really try and create this kind of open architecture where people can build whatever it is that creatively makes sense for the event. Hmm. Now, I understand you may not be able to go into specifics on this one because a lot of these um, uh, studios that are going to be hopefully used for kind of streaming events are still kind of in the early development and hopefully something we're going to be seeing more and more in the coming weeks. But from Disguise's point of view, what's been what has been your opinion of this kind of it's almost like this new developing kind of like sector within the live events industry what's what's been your response to it i think it's uh, it's really exciting because what we've got now is we've got a lot of our customer base who yes they're in challenging times they they've either had events cancelled or their order books are looking low and they're they're looking at ways to utilize the equipment they've got and actually uh, what we're finding is that this has spurred a period of innovation where people are actually looking outside of their normal sphere of how they do an event and looking at what can we do that would give us an interesting angle. So we've seen customers uh, creating virtual concerts. We've seen people experimenting with uh, with creating entire kind of studio setups where people want to participate and those type of environments are, are things that our industry wasn't really deeply looking at before. Um, so this is now a period of kind of innovation. And, and they always say that crisis kind of breeds innovation. Mm. And I think we're, we're directly seeing the output of that from our customers' use of this XR workflows. In the, even the last like three weeks, we found ourselves almost going into a almost like the broadcast world because that is now where our industry is going just during this time. I think everyone's now like being like, okay, what's actually the future of a live event, especially if we're talking about ones that we're not maybe going to have full capacity audience. These type of XR workflows, these type of broadcast centric capabilities that are designed still with the end experience in mind are really important for those. You know, you couldn't do a, uh, a stage with a green screen and put an audience into the space. It just feels very weird because yeah. the audience can't see what's going on in the green screen. But when you're using XR, the audience can see the environment. They can see where the performer is and they can understand that relationship. And it feels like a show. So, um, it's important to understand that XR doesn't have to be applied as a complete workflow. So you don't have to build a cube of LED on your stage and put the camera tracking in and so on. You can use parts and pieces of this. So you could, for example, just do augmented reality elements for the broadcast feed from locked off cameras. That's a very low barrier of entry to, to start experimenting with this. It's going to be interesting to see, you know, when we finally kind of see the end of this, this kind of shows that are going to be created. It's going to be 
some interesting hybrids, I think, to be honest. Yeah, the, yeah. the combination of uh, people, but also the, um, the kind of chance for people now to use this to learn new skills, where the first shows they do are going to be a little bit experimental. And I think, you know, this, this brave new world that we're in is actually encouraging that experimental mindset. Every single aspect of how we do business is changing. And this is a chance for, for people to pick their tools, learn them, upskill, and, you know, kind of arm themselves ready for coming back to work, back to the next generation of, uh, of whatever shows are. I think what's really interesting about this is this is also repurposing existing equipment. This isn't massive new investments in, in tons of new technology. This is actually about, you know, rental suppliers or companies who own existing hardware, existing LED screens, cameras, disguised servers, and so on, mm -hmm. finding new uses for that equipment. If anyone kind of wants to look into XR as like a, a workflow, what can they do if they're kind of, you know, at home right now? Is it, can they go through the Disguise website or get in touch with you guys directly? What's the... Yeah, so we did, a, we did a series of webinars. As I mentioned earlier, we've been hosting these webinars on all sorts of different topics. So there's some XR specific webinars that you can go onto our website. And then, yeah, I would encourage people if they do have a project or they're interested in learning more about XR, get in touch with us. Um, we'd be happy to to hear about the projects, happy to hear about what they're, they're doing and uh, find the route that's most appropriate for them based on those experiences. Um, Disguise is also currently running a promotion where we're offering designer licenses, which is our offline pre-programming tool. Um, free of charge through till the end of September to get us all through this uh, this current situation. Mm -hmm. um, that's available through our web store. The requirement is that you need a USB key, one of the code meter keys, um, to program the license onto. And we're also doing a 50% discount on those keys through our web shop. So you can purchase the key and then get the free license applied onto it. Um, that's a really good way of getting started with Disguise. And again, we're also hosted webinar-based fundamentals training, and we're doing those regularly. Peter, thank you very much for your time. Thanks very much, Stu. It's been fun. <laughs> And thank you once again, Peter, and thank you for Disguise for providing all the B-roll footage. And thank you very much for watching at home. As I said at the start of the video, if you're wanting to delve a little bit deeper into this topic, you can find the full interview via Spotify, all of links on the TPI website. We're doing more and more of these TPI talks in the forthcoming weeks, so keep a lookout on social media, on Facebook, on Instagram, and you can actually find our previous issue on the TPI website and the Production Futures website, where we speak to DNB about immersive audio. You can also still read our digital edition online, as well as keep up with all the latest news from the industry on the TPI website. See you next time.